Mm. A lot of this early work was reported and there was no voucher specimens to document the collection. So a lot of it had to be dismissed. You know, uh, the, uh, ke- the beta-carboline chemistry of Banisteriopsis didn't really get well-defined until um, some Chinese scientists, uh, or at least they had a Chinese name, worked on them and discovered harmine, tetrahydroharmine, and harmaline as the main alkaloids. They could reference that to botanical voucher specimens, so they really should get the credit for discovering it. And then once that was done, then it was known, and you know, other scientists had to acknowledge that. Why did they describe it as telepathy? There was supposedly some sort of a story about some group telepathic experience. Yeah, this was just romantic. This was just some story, you mm. know, out of the literature. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it it was rumored to be able to cause telepathy. And, but this wasn't ayahuasca. They were only taking harmala. It's not clear. It's not clear. It's mm. not clear. Yeah, I mean, they may have been taking, but they may have been taking it. But whether they were getting telepathy, I kind of doubt it. But hmm. we know we could get telepathy on ayahuasca. It's not so uncommon. It happens all the time. People have group hallucinations, group visions. Has anybody ever bothered to independently like sequester people, put them into like uh, different rooms, have them do ayahuasca, and then have them describe a very similar experience or almost identical experience to prove that these telepathic experiences exist? Or at least to... As far as I know, that hasn't been done. See, yeah, because everybody wants to talk afterwards. Like, oh right. my God, <laughs> uh, did you see the dragon? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think that's been done. That seems like a, a worthy study. Mm-hmm. Because if, if I've heard from more than one person, uh, in fact, my friend Kyle Kingsbury and his wife had an ayahuasca experience where they both uh, had a visualization of their child. And then when they got back, she was pregnant and they wound up having this child from their visualization, mm-hmm. from, from, mm-hmm. from this experience. Um, obviously, they're very close and they were together and they probably communicated quite a bit. And, you know, I, w- I would just think it would be a really interesting experiment. It would be very interesting. I mean... And that sort of points out there is, you know, a realm of experience, a realm of knowing that these things give access to that's normally closed to us. I mean, mean, that's kind of a trivial statement, of course. Um, But then you get down to questions of how verifiable is that? How real is that? How, uh, you know, and, and people get... Um, I don't know if the term is hung up, but they can get baffled when you start talking about, uh, you know, the reality of, say, the entities you encounter on DMT. I mean, this is this is uh, some people I know are obsessed with trying to verify the reality of the entities yeah. that you find on DMT. And again, it comes down to if you experience them, they're real. Yeah. If anything you experience is real because you've experienced it, does it have a corresponding existence in the external world? Well, you know, what's external? What's internal? You know, we, we, we throw around these terms, these, these epistemological, metaphysical terms quite carelessly, mm. you know, without really thinking about it. What does it mean when you say, I'm in here and you're out there? You know, and then you take a psychedelic and you realize that's an artificial boundary. You know, we're all one. There is no separation. It's separate in normal consciousness, though. It's separated in normal consciousness. But then what is normal consciousness right. if not a reflection of your neurochemical brain state? I mean, everything you experience is an altered state because it's filtered into this brain, processed by the brain. And, you know, the brain is a biochemical engine that, you know, as I say often, we're made out of drugs. But it seems that our normal consciousness is the best state to propagate biological life and to keep our, our, whatever we've created in terms of our community structures and relationships and friendships and the ability to build structures and houses and things like that. These, all these things are done best when you're here and present. Whereas when you're in a psychedelic state, 
I agree with you. Well, the way I've always described it is if you had a meeting with God and you went and God gave you all the answers to the world and you, you experienced uh, undeniable beauty in the most extreme form possible where you couldn't have imagined it and then you came back, whether you hallucinated it or not, it's the exact same experience. Exactly. You can't put it on a scale. You right. can't weigh it. You right. can't, like, we've stretched the tape measure around and God is 47 inches across. Like, just because, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just because you can't right. measure it with what we term our, 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 you know, our metrics for reality. Right. And that is exactly the, the thing. Don't worry about whether it's real in the way we would define real. Is it good information or is it bad or is it not? That's the thing. Yes. It doesn't matter where it comes from. But it's such a if it's good information, then it has its own internal validity. And whether it came from some part of yourself that is normally obscure to you, or it came from the plant teacher or the aliens transmitting it through, it doesn't really matter. But we know? we are obsessed with that. We're we obsessed, are obsessed with reality. With yeah, because we, we are think we're being fooled it. a lot. Right, like, the, and this goes back to Terence's La Chirera, right. uh psychedelic experience, where he had a UFO encounter. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. the easily dismissing amongst us would go, "Well, he's tripping his balls off on mushrooms. Of course, he saw <laughs> UFOs. Was, right. was there a leprechaun driving the UFO? Like, all that's nonsense." Right, right. right. Easy to dismiss. Yes, and in fact, that is the nature of these phenomena. That's mm -hmm. what's really interesting. Easy to dismiss. You know, and that, that was another aspect of the experiment of La Chirera I left out when I was talking about my lecture. But there's almost always an element of absurdity yeah. in these experiences and in paranormal experiences and UFO encounters. It's like, little green man? Come yeah. on, are you kidding? But right. what the fuck? There are little green men, you right. know, and, and little blue men.